Hello Taurus friends, my name is Annie Botticelli and welcome to my video, Taurus July 2020 Must Knows. This month we've got high emotion. Here's our little checklist to know. We've got high emotion that trails off as the month moves on. And I'll show you on the chart what this looks like. They've got this cluster of Cancer energies. Fortunately, the Cancer energies are in a nice angle for Taurus placements. And that emotion can be wonderful. It doesn't have to be stressful. But either way, what you want to know is that throughout the month, with every day that passes, that emotion that was very strong in June, that's still strong in July, is getting shaken off like a dog, shakes off after a bath, okay? So by the time the end of the month comes, that heavy emotion is pretty much completely cleared and there's this shiny, new, clear light energy. All right, so that's the first thing to know and I'll show you in the chart where that um, high emotion is showing up, what areas of life. The next thing to know is that there's a need for action that's brewing. Okay, so Mars has moved into Aries as of the beginning of the month. This is not at a completely comfortable angle for Taurus, so it is going to cause you to be a little uncomfortable, but you'll feel this call to action that's building every day throughout the month. And fortunately, this building of needing to do something and feeling like you need to do something is going to be coupled with an open window to actually do it. And I especially like July 22nd through the 28th because although we have a um, pretty much close um, equal energy of salty aspects to difficult, I mean, sweet aspects this month. So basically the sweet aspects and the salty aspects are about even this month. In this week of July 22nd through July 28th, it's all sweet aspects. And the, the cloud of the retrograde from Mercury and Venus is wearing off, okay? And the, the new web of Mars retrograde energy that's going to be starting up at this time hasn't taken root yet. So Mars goes retrograde in September. And with every day we move that way, that deepens. But here in this magical week, we're not really dealing with Mars yet. It's trailing off from what we're dealing with. So this means as that Mars in, in Aries is making you feel like you know a bull in a china shop, you actually have a window to do something. Launches, big decisions, agreements, paperwork, major endings, you know, major beginnings, starting something new, um, making major purchases, which we'll talk about um, what area that will tend to come up for you when we look at the charts as well. And anything that you have to do. So the retrogrades and the eclipses have likely brought in options and opportunities or things that are non-negotiable that you just have to kind of follow through with. And this period of time is really great for actually taking the action on that. All right, so we do have this major change from the eclipses. Just to put this in perspective, sometimes in a whole year, we've got four eclipses. This year, we have six eclipses. And the amount of eclipses we have in general shows us the level of change that is coming. So if you we've got, you know, two more than usual this year, we can see already that this has been for everybody and the world a year of transformation. So three of those six eclipses are occurring between June and July. So just to kind of put in perspective, like this is a hot time for life lives to be changed, brilliant new beginnings and very emotional endings for better and worse, okay? We've got the ending of the Cancer uh, Capricorn Eclipse Cycle. We'll look on the charts. To, I'll show you where that is for you. But in general, this has been two years since the middle of 2018 of a strong highlight on home and family, real estate, mothers, mothering, and the inner world and ancestry. Also, the Capricorn end of it, which is the fathers, the father figures, the bosses, your place out in the world, the business, the work, the employment, your higher purpose, like not higher meaning better, but meaning like what you're doing out in the world versus what you're doing in the home, which could be also a higher purpose, you know, of course, with children and family and things like that. But like this storyline and keeping that balance has been very strongly accentuated over these last two years. And we can see even just in the world, the changes that have come from this, how people are doing home and work and education and education in the home and work in the home. And like this storyline is, you know, has been very powerful. So we've got a very, triumphant in some cases ending or dramatic in some cases endings here um, from these eclipses. And for certain people, if these eclipses are not hitting you in a tight angle, you'll either be holding space for the other people that have all this change going on or the changes for you are more internal. 
like you feel something big is happening in there, but maybe it hasn't yet manifested on the external, right? Then we've got just general busyness because the third house is going to be accentuated for you. And this is just a time when you're likely to be very busy. Hopefully things will be safe for you to be mobile physically because a third house accentuation does tend to bring that running all over the place, doing errands, doing this, driving, traveling, doing all this. So, you know, we'll see if it, if it manifests, um, that way and if it doesn't the way it manifests um another way it can manifest and this can also happen at the same time is exchanging information teaching learning taking in information you know putting out information it's a high mental type of energy where ideas are exchanged you know prolific expression is occurring writing you know things like that or you're taking in the information through education so like an active mind or an active body or both is very likely at this time and this transportation and communication sector is going to command attention. Okay, and that brings us to looking at the charts and why I'm saying all of these things are happening. Okay, so we talked about this third house. This third house is going to be accentuated even for, for every Taurus placement. So no matter where you are on the Taurus spectrum, and let's just check that out here to find that one. There we go. All right, so Early Tauruses are basically the April born or zero to nine degrees. Middle basically are May 1st through 10th or 10 to 19 degrees. And late basically May 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. All right, so this is the early degree chart. We can see the full third house. This is the middle degree chart. You can see it's also full. This late degree chart, you can see that energy is still in the second house at the beginning of the month. But these planets that we're talking about, especially these two that are most moving here quickly. They're going to move into that third house along with the earlier Taurus placements. It's just going to take some weeks for it to really get grooving. So what we're talking about here with the third house is true for all of you, but if you're later in the month, just know that it might take a little bit for it to really start getting kicking for you. So what this means is that your devices, your communication, the things that you use to communicate, computers, you know, your methods of communication with other people, your relationship communications, um, transportation, your cars, your, you know, boats, your bikes, all of that, and your mobility, your general physical mobility, that's all coming in in a big way. And there's heavy emotion here. Okay, so this is a cluster. This is a cancer cluster of emotion. And this is also a house of siblings and relatives that aren't your parents or kids. Okay uncles, aunts, cousins, you know, brothers, sisters, things like that. So we've got this high emotion coming to your car, to your devices, to your certain relatives. And that can be for better or worse. So you can find out your sister or brother is having a baby, or you can find out your car needs a lot of help and you might need to buy a new one. If you have to make a new purchase of a device or a car and you can help it, I love that time between the 22nd and the 28th of July for new purchases because you're out of the web of the of the um, Mercury and Venus and you're not yet in the Mars retrograde web. Mars rules metal. So, you know, it's not like, I mean, we're, we've got a long stretch of time where Mars is influencing basically from the end of July into the beginning of 2021 and 2021. So it's like, it's not like we can't, do anything with metal until then. But if you're going to have a new hair dresser, a new haircut, this is a nice window too, because again, we're like getting out of the Venus window, which rules the love and the, and the um, appearance and all that, but we're not yet in the Mars ruling the scissors energy. And the same thing with the devices and the cars, they're all metal. So if you can concentrate your new purchases into this time, if that's in your flow and that works well for you, you're going to be out of what's coming and out of what's just been, <laughs> basically, okay? And a lot of things will come up. And if your siblings or relatives come to you with something that needs to occur, this window is also very good for negotiations or agreements or moving forward with something, okay? So that's going to show up in a big way. We talked about how Mars is moving into Aries and that is going to create impetus and that that impetus is going to continue to build and Mars is going to be in the sign of Aries until the beginning of 2021 and Mars rules the sign of Aries. So, you know, this, how people use their energy, how you use your energy is going to be called into question. Um, but this is also going to highlight the, um, you know, your, your unconscious mind and, you know, it could stir up a lot of thoughts and deep kind of, um, 
emotional issues or it can inspire massive change from the inside out, right? So that's that's pretty exciting, but but again, it is going to stir up some things and you might not have clarity until the month moves on. So what happens this month is that the need for impetus starts earlier than the time when it's good to do all the stuff, all right? So you're gonna have this little bit of time where you've got to kind of be a little disciplined and get clear get the energy straight behind what you're going to do. So for example, if you wanna ask for a raise, all right, if you're asking from the place of being mad that you didn't get one, and you're asking from the place of desperation because you need the money, and then you go to ask, it doesn't have the energy that is going to be make it most successful. But if you work on trying to heal, you know, some of the fear, some of the self-esteem things, use the Mars energy to work on those inner things, and then you take that new clear space out and then ask for it. You see, it, it like, it changes depending on the place you're asking from. And it also changes what you're magnetic to. So this is, this is gonna be a very strong storyline for the rest of the year, but you're kind of getting a little taste of it here as the month moves on. All right, so I wanna talk about this last eclipse here. We've I talked about where Taurus would experience the first June eclipse in the May report. Then in the June report, I talked about where you'll experience the second June eclipse. Now this third eclipse, July 4th or 5th, depending on your time zone, is going to be 13 degrees of Capricorn. And it's going to be the end of that Cancer Capricorn cycle. So we told you that's like a big ending. So for the early degree placements, that's pretty much here in the ninth house right? Middle degree placements also pretty much in the ninth house. Might have a little energy in the eighth house there. And the same goes with the, the late degree placements. It's likely going to be for most of you in that eighth house, but there's some carryover with the ninth house. Okay, so let's just kind of drill this down for a second early and middle ninth and a little bit of late and then middle and late also have kind of this eighth energy so what does that mean basically eclipses in the ninth house can radically change how you think about something it can change a belief system it can create a dark night of the soul where the things you thought you believed are um different than what you thought or that you have to change your mind in order to be able to do something um, that's important to you. This can have to do with issues of immigration and long distance travel. It can have to do with education, teaching, learning, publishing. And to see more of how I've seen, I give a, I've made a complete whole video on this. Eclipses in Sagittarius, okay, because that's the house it's in. So basically when you go to my homepage on um, Annie Botticelli or AnnieHelpsYouTV.com, my YouTube homepage, at the bottom of that page, scroll all the way to the bottom, there's an eclipse series. So all Tauruses watch this um, eclipses in Capricorn, okay? And then also watch, all of you, watch the eclipses in Sagittarius. And then middle and late degree placements also watch eclipses in Scorpio. And those middle to late degree placements you're very likely to have changes in your relationship sectors, okay? This can also have to do with clearing up of debt or bringing in of new debt for something that you want to buy. This can have, you know, taxes, inheritances, um, anything having to do with money, relationships, marriage, um, your family money, spousal money, lotto, anything like that. But again, if you watch this video, Eclipses in Scorpio, you'll see a very long detailed explanation of all the things that I've seen manifest with that. And there are a lot. So you'll definitely wanna look these up. Something else that we wanna point out is that this 13 degree of Capricorn eclipse is actually in a really great angle for Taurus placement. So this is something to celebrate. Now we're going to use just whatever we find here, the late degree chart, but what I'm talking about is true for everyone unless I differentiate out, okay? So the energy of Capricorn is in a 120 degree angle to Taurus. That's the most favorable in all of astrology. So generally, when that happens, the outcomes are more likely to be favorable. Now we don't see everything else going on in your personal chart, so we don't see 
you know, the, the web of everything that's more complex. But just from this, per, you know, perspective, it's very likely to be a positive change because of how it's going to affect your placement. Now, those of you who are in the eight degree to 18 degree range, so basically the late early degree placements through the through late middle degree placements, all right? And the closer you are to 13, so basically that's going to be um, if you're looking at the birthday perspective, that's going to be like May 3rd. The closer you are to May 3rd, the more intense this is going to hit. But if you're like right there at the end of April or like going into, you know, the end of the first week of May, this is all like prime territory for, you know, very notable things that come from the eclipses. If an eclipse doesn't hit one of your planets straight on or in a close angle like this, then those people are more likely to have a, like a subtle thing happening or watching other people go through changes as they're not. But the closer it gets, the more likely it is to be very profound. And since it's in a nice angle, we hope that that will be a nice manifestation. Okay, so if you would like to know more about this month, I can tell you that there is about an equal split of salty aspects to sweet aspects this month. So it's like sweet, salty, sweet, salty until you get to that stretch of July 22nd through the 28th and it's just sweet and then it starts again, sweet, salty, and that goes all through August as well. If you wanna know what the aspects are, when they are, what you can expect from them, then sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com. When you sign up for my free email newsletter, you also get my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine for free. And I often give many things to my email group list, so it's good to be on that. So if you want written horoscopes by me that are very simple, they're not technical like I get into into the videos, you can go to cozybysweetstarlight.com and all the links that I'm giving you are also in the notes underneath the video when you click on the more button. It opens up all those notes. So at CozyBySweetStarlight.com, I write written horoscopes that are very simple, very short encapsulations of the energy of the month. And I also write those a month early like I do everything else. And there are also all kinds of other Astrology Kiss blogs at CozyBySweetStarlight.com. You will love it. It's a beautiful site. If you would like to learn astrology or check out any of my free courses, you can go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. That's my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. You'll see my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. And I can teach you to do everything that you need to do from you know even the admin things, anything that you need to get set up to be a professional astrologer, I teach you in that course. And you can also see the growing list of free courses at that site. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.